Hello, this is John Chernus again, and in this lesson we're going to study two main protocols used in TCPIP. You will see these protocols in almost every capture session you do with a protocol analyzer like Wireshark. The protocols are going to be ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, and DNS, Domain Name System. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two protocols and try to figure out what they're doing. So, as you recall in a prior lesson, I captured a session where I visited the San Diego State University website, www.sdsu.edu, and I was able to log all that traffic and save that in a capture file. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and open up that file, we're going to start from there. So I'm going to start up Wireshark right off my desktop here. And again, I'm not going to create any new traffic in this lesson, I'm going to open up a session I saved previously when I went to that uh, San Diego State website. So as soon as this loads I will open up that file, I believe it's in my documents. Okay, so here's my screen for Wireshark and instead of creating a new uh, set of traffic I'm going to go to file and go to open and in my documents I have this capture file called lesson underscore capture one dot pcap go ahead and click on that and click on open and here I have the same session here's the www.sdsu.edu reference as I recall it was 235 frames I'm scrolling down just make sure I have the same file yes 235 frames or packets I'm good to go so I'm going to scroll this right back up to the top so the first thing we need to do is understand what these first two frames or packets are doing, ARP, and then what these two third and fourth packets, DNS, are doing. As you recall, I went to the www.sdsu.edu website and that triggered the events that followed in this capture session. So a fundamental concept of networking is something known as basically determining when your computer is going to another site on the internet it has to make a very fundamental decision that decision is is the host I'm trying to reach in this case the San Diego State website is that host on the same network as mine or on a different network than mine and the way this can be determined is by going to your command prompt this is in start all programs accessories but I have it in my quick list here command prompt so I believe you guys all know how to get to it by now so to save time I'm gonna go here and I'm just going to type the following command, ipconfig. When you type ipconfig, you get several things. Primarily, you get your IP address, and then something here called the subnet mask, which is what we need to talk about a little bit. And then this third uh, IP, uh, this IP address called the default gateway. So a subnet mask is not an IP, by the way, but this IP is my IP on my computer, and then this is an IP of what's known as the default gateway. So let's try to figure out what this means. Well, let's study this, the subnet mask. The subnet mask can get very, very complicated and involved. We're going to keep it fairly simple here. What the subnet mask does is it tells you what part of your IP address is a network component and what part of your IP address is a host component. Those are the two components of an IP address. The network that the computer or the printer, whatever that thing is on the network, whatever uh, network it resides on and then the actual host number of it it's kinda of like a phone number where you have the area code and then the actual phone number the area code would be kinda of like the network and then the phone number would be the host so it's a very similar concept what the subnet mask tells you is if you look there are one two three four placeholders in the subnet mask same thing as an IP one two three four those placeholders are called octets those octets store numbers if you see the number 255 in a particular octet, that means the corresponding octet in an IP address is a network number, completely a network number. Same thing here in the second octet. Since the subnet mask is 255, the corresponding number in the second octet in the IP address is a network number. In the third octet, same thing. 255 is a network number. That means network. That means that one is a network number. If I have a zero in a subnet mask in the fourth octet here, for example, that means that that number 107 in my IP address is a host number. So to make a long story short, I can mask this number, that's why it's called a subnet mask basically, over the IP address to determine what is the network address of this host of my computer that I'm doing these lessons from. So what it is is actually the network is 192.168 
dot one dot zero. Whenever you have a network address, the host value becomes zero to identify the network. So again, whenever there's a 255, it means it's a network component. Whenever there's a zero in a subnet mask, it's a host component. So by masking that over the IP, I see my network address of my computer here is 192.168.1.0. Let's look at this default gateway. The address is very similar to mine, 192.168.1. Those first three octets are the same as my IP address. And since the subnet mask says the first three octets are network, that means this default gateway is on the same network as my computer. And you're going to find that to be the case all the time for whatever computer you're sitting at, is your default gateway is actually on the same network as you. More about that in a minute. It may look different on your computer, and that's when the subnet mask gets more complicated. This subnet mask is actually a 32-bit uh, address, which means there's eight bits of information, or eight you know, placeholders of ones and zeros, a bit is a binary digit, in each of these octets. Eight bits, eight bits in the second, eight bits in the third, eight bits in the fourth. That's why an IP address is called a 32-bit address, by the way but don't want to get too complicated here but you will sometimes see a subnet mask I just want to mention it where it will be something like 255.255.240.0 and if you crunch that in your scientific calculator you'll see 255 is actually eight ones in binary so each one of those bits when it has a value of one means it's a network address if this number in the third octet was 240 for example that would convert into binary into 11110000 and that's a more complicated subnet mask where the first four bits of the third octet would be network bits identifying the network and the last four bits would be 0000 or host that gets a lot more complicated that's a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, project for you guys but I just want to throw that out there. To make a long story short, you'll notice when we apply the subnet mask to the gateway, the network address to the default gateway is also the same as my host, 192.168.1.0 is the network address. Now, let's see why this is important. Remember, our goal here was we went to San Diego State University's website. So I'm going to type ipconfig slash all. This second uh, set of frames, frames three and four, will help make this more clear when I get to that, but I want to kind of stick with ARP right now. But I do have to relate those third and fourth frames in uh, pretty much right here. If I do ipconfig slash all, which is what I typed here, you can see that right here, I get a lot more output on my computer about its IP settings and network settings in general. And one of the things you'll see here is the DNS server, and you see an address here for DNS. DNS is domain name system 172.27.35.1 that's the IP address I have to contact to get the resolution or answer to the query I'm going to ask in the third and fourth frames asking what is the IP address of the San Diego State University website so I can connect to it if you look at that IP address the first thing you want to ask is is that IP address on the same network or different network as my computer well let's go back and think about it Remember, the subnet mask on my computer was 255.255.255.0. And what that means is the first three octets of my address are the network component. So I would apply that same subnet mask to this DNS server address, 172.27.35.1. And what that means is the network I'm trying to reach is 172.27.35.0. Since that network address does not exactly match my network address, remember mine was 192.168.1.0, I have to send this request to the DNS server off of my network. I have to send it to another network. I have to send it to some place that can take care of forwarding that to the network where this DNS server resides. It's kind of like reaching a fork in the freeway where you have to make a decision. You can't go any farther and you have to forward it to another uh, freeway uh, like a Y in the road. So you have to take a distinct path to get to your destination at that point. So that's what's happening here. Since I can't reach uh, the host for DNS 172.27.35.1 directly, I need to send it to the next best thing. And the next best thing is the default gateway. The default gateway, as you recall, is up here. Let me scroll up a little bit here. Actually, it's right there. Default gateway, 192.168.1.1. 
I can send that to that host because it's on the same network as me. I can always send to the next available host on the network as long as it's on the same network as me. This is a fundamental concept of routing. So I need to find this address on the network to send to it. And that's what's happening in these first two frames with ARC. And this happens all the time. I'm going to minimize this.